This meeting is being recorded. Welcome everyone to the Frankenstein debating master classes. Today we will covering the junior category from early four to six and the young debaters who are debating, doing debating for the first time. And uh, we will take all the question in the la later half. First, I'm going to give it to Nitiksha ma'am. Hi Nitiksha, are you there? Hello, yes. Uh, I'll just take a few seconds to plug in my charger. Meanwhile, I need everybody who is a starter at debate, like any format, any kind, if this is your first tournament, to please raise your hand just so I have a fair idea. Okay, um, quite a few of us. All right, fair enough. Thank you. Uh, lower your hands, please. All right, so this is how we're going to go about this session, right? Um, I'll first talk about the very technical parts, right? Like what we did yesterday as well, but then I'm going to reiterate them, say taking five minutes of your time, just go ahead, go over all of that uh, technicalities of that particular format, like one-on-one. -on -one. And then we move on to like the analysis of how should I prep ma'am? Or how do I deliver a speech when I haven't ever done that in the past? And those kinds of very fundamental things about debating. That experienced debaters know, but then if you're going for the first time, this session has got to be very useful for you in order for you to have, I mean, I'm just going to lay down a plan of action for you, which you can follow in order to prepare yourself for the debate. Is that understood? Let's try to get into it, okay? So like I said yesterday, and I've been saying it for quite a while now, but I'll just reiterate it for the benefit of everybody here. And please don't repeat this question over again, okay? So this is the last time we should have to clarify what kind of format it is that we're following for the qualifiers. So the format that we're following is one-on-one, -on -one, which means every person who is participating delivers two speeches. These two speeches don't happen one after the other. It's first me giving a speech, followed by the other side giving a speech, and then my a second speech coming in, which means in between my two speeches, there is always going to be one speech from the other side. OK, so it's always alternative. First proposition goes, then opposition, then proposition, then opposition. So like this to and fro, you do four speeches, right? That's one on one format for you. Yes, Mama, please. I don't, is that uh, I'm, uh, Mama, I'm doing with my phone the class, so I can't raise my hand virtually. Um, that's okay. Nobody is supposed to be joining. Okay, about you being a new uh, debater, right? You are being a novice debater. All right, that's okay. So if you if I tell you to raise your hand to respond to a certain question or comment, just put in the chat whatever your response is. Okay, if you can't raise your hands, if you are on your phone or whatever. Okay, ma'am. All right. So, Excuse um, me, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, can we have a mock debate today? Not today, not today. Uh, for mocks, we have a separate day, right? So we've scheduled the mock for like the 18th. There you'll be practicing speech delivery. So wait for that to come your way. Today, it's about the fundamentals being cleared, okay? Now, what are fundamentals? How do I prep? How do I deliver what I have prepped? How do I go let go of my anxiety? Like when I uh, a fear of public speaking and all those things, we can discuss them here today, okay? So just so you have the level of confidence and also you have a starting point to start your preparation from your end, okay? So all of those things I'm going to be clearing in this session. What you're saying is not a part of this session. It will come on the 18th of this month, which is not very far away. All right. So in the first uh, step of your preparation, you have to understand the format, which is one on one, which is three minutes spe long speeches, two speeches out of which one you can prepare. The other one you can't possibly prepare before listening to the others to your op opponent. Right. So it is just one speech that you're supposed to prepare in the three days time that you will get. Ma'am, how do I go about preparing this particular speech? I haven't ever in my life written a speech before or I haven't memorized my speech, right? Relevant questions, I think. So first of all, how do you write a nice, effective speech for yourself? Try to first research on the motion that you have been given. Don't be too prompt or don't be too... Uh, like headlong in just going ahead and writing a speech even before researching on the motion ah! or even before oh understanding. I'm your net to bet with is low. Are um oh where you're unmuted. Yeah. 
so what we're what i'm saying is that when you look at emotion whenever you're given emotion doesn't matter in this tournament or any other whenever you're given emotion what is the first thing that you should do as a debater who's supposed to be talking on on that motion and taking a stance on that motion you're supposed to understand the words in that motion okay that's like the first step write it down if you have to these are very important step, steps for you to actually be able to make a speech that is relevant to your case okay but before i go into uh, like more details let me just clarify the meanings of some words that i'm going to be using a lot one is your stance now what is stance can anybody answer for me i had clarified this yesterday as well Does anybody remember what a stance is? Ma'am, can I? Yeah, Naman, go ahead. Ma'am, stats is short for statistics. Ma'am, may I? Ma'am, ma'am, may I? I'm not okay. Okay, I'm not saying stats. I am say I am saying stance. S T A N C E. Stance. Ma'am, may I um, ask you a question? Oh, okay. I see you guys raising your hands. Okay, and I'll choose. Right. I'm going to give everybody a chance as long like as far as I can. Archie, can you answer this question? Um, may I? Yes, like, um, if you go for or uh, yeah, uh, your for and against of proposition or opposition is your stance. Yes, fair enough. All right, um, guys. Uh, one thing for sure, you have to be on camera, right? Just so there's better engagement between you and like me, but also between yourselves, your peers. Just get on camera, yeah. For those of you who can, I'm sure not everybody is having like internet crisis at the same time. So please come on camera. All right, fair enough. So uh, what Archie is saying is the right definition of what stance is, right? So if you're going for the motion, that's your stance. If you're going against the motion, that's your stance as well. Stance is just which side of the house are you on? Now, what is a house? House is the place within which you're debating. So if it's a room in which we're debating, if it's a Zoom call that we're debating in, then the place that we're debating in is called the house, right? Do you understand? We are debating within the house. That is why when you get motions, they will always be like this. This house believes that smoking should be banned, for example. Okay. Now, what is this house in this, ma'am? Right? Because any motion that you will see in your practice sessions or in the tournament, it will always start with this house. So don't get confused. this house is just a way of referring to the context the situation within which we're debating the place in which we're debating is the house do you guys understand so every motion starts with this particular phrase this house believes that this house regrets something this house prefers something this house supports something this house opposes something that's how your motions go all right because this house or the house is the context is the situation within which you are debating as proposition or opposition so in the house there are Mom, three like this house is polluted not really not really how i mean how does this house is what can you come again with whatever you were saying polluted no no not really so like that's not a motion right how do you uh, debate on that this house is polluted as in if you have to say that if you have to discuss pollution in a motion then it will have to be this house as new delhi believes that the city is polluted or something on those lines do you understand so this house as somebody or as something and those kind is of it important to use this house it is i mean it's not important for you but then when motions come your way when we give you motions they always start with this house it's a formality okay now wait let me just share my screen to give you guys a fair idea there is this website called hellomotion.com and it has a lot of motions from a lot of tournaments i'll just share screen if that helps now have a look at this right any how, any motion that you might read here begins with th th yes, is short for the screen is not available yeah yeah now it is it is right yeah Cool. Yes, ma'am. All no, right. So here, look at this. Ma'am, the screen is not visible. Ma'am, it is. Why is that? It is. Ma'am, it, it is. is. Ma'am, now you stop sharing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I stopped sharing because you guys were saying that it's not visible. Is it visible now? No, ma'am. I think it What? will look take a while to load. Um, no, ma'am. It's saying in mid. 
Nichita Tyagi has started screen sharing. It is loading. Yeah. It will take some time. It is loading. Okay. Is it visible now? No, ma'am. Want to see it? It's no. still loading. Previously, it was working. Ma'am, I am able to see it, but. It's just you, Bhavya, who's able to see it. Give me a second. Is this yeah. is this better? Is it visible now? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I do internet issues. No, ma'am. Ma'am, no, no, okay, no worries. We let go of it. No need. What I was trying to tell you guys, I'll tell it to you anyway. How what we are what trying to discuss is that any motion that you get always begins with this house. So this house opposes smoking, or this house regrets the rise of uh, the Modi government. I mean, it can be any motion, right? As long as it starts with this house, you don't have to get confused about what this house is, because I already told you this house is a setting. It's a formality kind of a thing to refer to a certain place where the debate is happening. Is that understood? Right, you have to that this house uh, is about pollution. Okay, so understand this, guys. This house is the setting, is the place that you are debating in. Like, if I want to talk about where what, the place you are debating in, how do I refer to it? I refer to it by calling something, right? I can't say in this room we are debating on this motion. It's not very formal. To make it formal, we say this house. That's it. So this house is made up of three things. Ritima and Navya, I'll take you in a while. You don't have to literally raise your hands. I see you raising your hands. So this house has three things, three stakeholders. One are your debaters, okay? Now these debaters are divided into two parts. There is one debater from for the motion. There is another debater from against the motion. So two different stakeholders. The third stakeholder are the judges or the adjudicators. All of them put together are in the house. And in the house, a motion is being debated. Does that make sense? Okay, Anika followed by Navya followed by Ridhima, quickly. Yes, ma'am, ma my doubt is not related to what you told just now. The PDF that was shared in the group, it was written in the themes, there was something called construction. What does that mean specifically? I'll let you know, I'll let you know of that. Uh, Navya, what's your question? Uh, Ma'am, like you told that this house uh, means we need, uh, this is a phrase that uh, this tells about what we are debating about. So is it important so that we also say this before our speech, like this house is against the pollution? Okay, I will clear the doubt. Ridhima? So Ma'am, uh, like uh, for example, if, uh, is this uh, correct that this house uh, believes that uh, Delhi is a polluted uh, city. Perfectly fine. Yes. This house believes that Delhi is polluted. It's a motion for debate in the house. You have to debate on whether or not Delhi is polluted. So proposition side would say, yes, we do believe that Delhi is polluted. The other side will say, no, Delhi isn't polluted. You mistake it. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Ma how can we say Delhi is not polluted when it is very polluted? Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, your uh, your voice is not coming. Ma'am, your voice is not coming actually. Um, I think we are connecting. Ma'am, your video is off. Ma'am, I can't see your video or your, uh, your voice. Actually, ma'am is disconnected from audio. So neither she can hear you or... She can't hear you or she cannot hear Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you are. I got disconnected. Yes, I don't... Okay. Okay, assuming I'm audible, I can't see myself though. Yeah, okay. So what uh, the question asked, uh, the first question that got asked, right, about construction as a theme, construction just relates to real estate, right? 
like construction practices, deforestation, buildings being erected, housing facilities being created, increase in population leading to increase in construction of buildings, of infrastructure. Does that clear your doubt? Navya, was it your question? No, right? Like whoever's question it was, does that clear the doubt? Um, could you repeat? So construction practices refer to your real estate business, right? Wherein you erect buildings in the urban areas, there are more and more houses being created. No, uh, so land is being used a lot for like construction, for just housing facilities, which means it, trees are slowly and steadily going away. Do you guys understand? So that's how it relates to environment. As and when you construct more, you also have to destroy more and more greenery, right? Does everybody agree with that very basic fundamental statement? Yes, so then in that case, you have to go ahead and debate it, debate on construction from an ecological perspective, from an environmental perspective, right? As to how is construction a detrimental exercise and thereby the monster, which is like the broad theme in uh, Frankenstein, an environmental monster, okay? I hope that answers. Uh, another question was on how do we as debaters deal with this house formality, right? So you as debaters don't necessarily have to repeat the motion. Some debaters have the habit of saying panel today, I'm going to discuss uh, my views on the motion. This house believes that so and so and so. so not everybody has to do that. It's not a compulsion. It's your style altogether. If you want to say which motion you're going to be debating, debating on, well and good. If you don't, you do not have to. You do not have to care about saying this house. It's just a formality. But then it's important important for you to know about it at the same time because the motions that you will be getting will be drafted or uh, like, like articulated in this way wherein they start with this phrase called this house okay just so you're not taken off uh, guard i just told you about this okay now moving on once now this house was a very important term that you will keep coming across every now and then if you choose to stay in the field of debating and continue debating second thing is proposition and opposition does everybody understand what i mean when i say proposition and opposition people who don't can raise their hands it's it's entirely absolutely okay for you to not know what proposition and opposition is as like novice debaters okay naman and proposition is one is the house which is for the motion and the opposition is the house which is against the motion like first i have said this speech uh, it uh, do it will be replied or uh, the opposition will speak another speech then i'll reply that and then he will reply that yes what the truth is um lower your hands guys i'll tell you what proposition opposition is and i'll tell you the different terms that are used yes, to refer to these two sides ma'am i have a, uh, like uh, just like i have given a speech then uh, uh, the opponent uh, will give a speech or he will reply for that speech. no they will also give their speech so if you have given your constructive speech the opponent will also be given a chance to give a constructive speech then your reply speech will come and then their reply speech will come okay ma'am okay now guys i need you to stop raising your hands i need you to stop asking questions as well we'll take the questions towards the end okay because we end up wasting a lot of time answering questions and we don't get to the crux of things. Now, uh, about uh, what is a house, ma'am, I joined late. Whoever is joining late can watch the recording of the video, right? We can't keep delaying everybody's, uh, everybody has like other commitments. They have to leave after an hour, so we can't keep repeating things. Just watch the YouTube video uh, tomorrow when it's up on the YouTube channel. All right, back to proposition and opposition. Proposition is just the, okay. So the house is always divided into two sides. Okay. Now we are in a house. In this house, there are adjudicators. There's person from the, for the motion and against the motion. What we need to understand is that this house is divided into two sides. Then one side is for the motion. The other side is against the motion. Do you understand? Think of it as the parliament, right? We all know that the parliament in our country is also divided into the ruling party and the opposition parties, right? I hope most of us know that. So yes. ruling party is the yes. government side or the proposition side and the op op opposing party is the opposition. 
so sometimes the proposition side is also called the government okay don't get confused that oh we didn't know there was government also that was involved in this debate or something that's just a general way of addressing the proposition side so there are some general ways of addressing the uh, proposition side i'm going to put them in the chat as well so one way is of calling it proposition simply for the motion okay for um, the motion you're freezed is my screen frozen Yes, ma'am. That's okay. It'll it'll keep coming back and it'll keep going off. I told you there are internet issues. No, ma'am. Don't leave your screen off. Yeah, for some people, yeah, yeah, it's internet issues, guys. Don't let it disturb you all. It it'll come back. It'll be back. If you can't hear me, then it's a problem. So proposition side is also like the side for that speaking for the motion. It's also called the government every now and then. Okay. it's also called the affirmative side so these are the different names that might be used for the opposition side in different debates okay people have their own ways of addressing so you shouldn't be like caught off guard or you shouldn't be anxious about these new terms just because you haven't heard of them that's why i'm telling you how the different ways of addressing the proposition side now coming on to the opposition this is the negative side okay this is a uh, the also the opposition it's also called the opposition sometimes simply because government and governments again, and against the government is always the opposition right so there are different ways of addressing both of these sides you shouldn't have to feel very uh, under prepared just because people are using new terms about these sides okay two sides of the house is you can call them whatever i can call them proposition opposition i can call them government opposition i can call them for and against i can call them affirmative and negative the thing and the meaning remains the same Does that make sense? Yes, okay. Uh, On to the next thing uh, about uh, the motion, right? Now, how do you prepare for the motion? These are the basic terms, okay? And if there are terms that I'm using which you don't understand the meaning of, just put in the chat and I'll clarify. So now, when you're about to prepare for your uh, speech, which will be very soon because you'll be given your motions very soon, you're supposed to be debating on the twentieth of twentieth of this month. what you're supposed to be doing or what you're expected to do is that you look at the motion once you've been given the motion have a like a very pedantic look at it pedantic means very uh, wherein you do you look at it from a very close perspective okay so sometimes what happens is that the motion sounds very easy this house believes that fast fashion should be banned right so what i might do as a not so experienced debater is that i go to the internet i type fast fashion i google it out and whatever i see about fast fashion in the top 3 lines that are shown to me on google i copy them down without even investigating if the this information that i have gotten from google is true or not right and i just base my entire case on that very small uh, section of the information that i got from the from google about fast fashion that's a wrong way of going about preparation right when you're given a motion don't directly jump to writing a speech because when can you write a speech you can only write a speech when you have clarity about the motion itself right writing is very secondary writing is when i have my thoughts in my head i just need to pen them down so that i don't forget it during my speech do you understand writing is not the most important part of the process research and make creation of constructives is okay what is research if i am given a motion on fast fashion first i go ahead and see the, what does this motion relate to which theme does it relate to okay so if i have been given a motion about clothes then it relates to the fast fashion theme okay i have identified i will now go ahead and research the theme okay i'm also putting it in the chat for your reference guys in just in case you miss it research the theme first very important then come to the words in the motion very important for you to research the words in the motion okay now the words in the motion can be very tough or they can be very easy sometimes it might be fast fashion not everybody knows about fast fashion so it's reasonable for you to go to the internet and quickly find out what fast fashion is green washing is another concept that you will read about in the articles that we will be sharing with you you might not know what green washing is right now but you will know after you have read the articles so some words you will definitely go to the internet for but even if you think there are some words that you know the meaning of i will suggest that you try to make a meaning out of them what do i mean by that if we if say there is a motion in which there is a word said saying environment 
I think everybody thinks that they know the meaning of environment here, right? How many of you think you know the meaning of environment already? Can you give me a like a heads up? That's very few of you guys. Come on, you don't know what the meaning of environment is. All right. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fair enough. Everybody thinks they know the meaning of environment, but the truth about debating is lower your hands now. I get got a fair idea. Thank you all. Now the truth about debating is though that not you have to understand as debaters that no word has a stable meaning. Do you guys understand? No word in the English language has a stable meaning, which means even if I'm saying Nitiksha and I myself am Nitiksha, I cannot say that I know Nitiksha enough to talk about Nitiksha in a motion. Do you understand? What I'm trying to say then is that I, as a person, know who I am, right? Because I am myself. So I'm supposed to know myself, right? Just how Parth is supposed to know himself or Nabhya is supposed to know herself or Mishri is supposed to know herself. That's very basic and fundamental. But if I become, if I'm put at the center of a debate, which means if there is a motion around me, let's say this house believes that Nitiksha is, Nitiksha studies well. If that was a motion, then not everybody will think of Nitiksha as this in the same way. Do you understand? If I am the proposition side, I will think of Nitiksha in a way that it benefits my case. I have to prove that Nitiksha studies well. So I have to prove her to be a hardworking and intelligent person, right? Only then can I prove that she studies well. But other than that, the opposition side will think differently. They don't want Nitiksha to be thought of as intelligent. Because if she were, then she will study well and they won't be able to support the statement. Or they would not be able to confute the statement that Nitiksha studies well. And that's exactly what they have to do as opposition, right? They're supposed to destroy what the government is saying. So they will have to define Nitiksha different from how the government defines Nitiksha. But pay attention to this very important thing. When somebody is debating about me in the house, nobody is asking me who I, wh who I think I am to define me. Do you understand? Everybody is making their own perception of who Nitiksha is without even asking me. That's what happens to the words as well. When you said you know what environment is, that's a very general understanding of environment. But as a debater, you can define environment in a thousand ways possible. That is why in a debate, in your first speech, you should always try to describe the terms in the motion. I will give you an example. For example, all of us think that we know India, right? Because we we come from India, most of us. I think all of us are sit, like attending this class from some part of India only right now, right? Most of us, if not all of us. So India is a country that belongs to us. It's like our homeland. We know everything about it or so we think. But then India can be defined in a thousand possible ways in a debate. That's why you shouldn't take its meaning for granted. For example, Janvi might go ahead and say that India is a diverse country. Fair enough. Agreed, right, Janvi? Not if you agree. Okay. Bhavya might say that Bhavya is talking to somebody on the phone. We will let her be. Navya might think that India is a country that underwent uh, a struggle for independence, right? It had a struggle for independence in the 1947. In 1947, I'm sorry. So that's also fine. Navya's characterization is also fine. Now, coming on to who else is on my screen, R R right? Ridhima might say something else. Can you give me a quick fact about India, Ridhima? Anything? India has given birth great leaders. Am I audible, ma'am? India has uh, is a country of communal conflicts, Hindu-Muslim conflicts, agreed? Not if yes. Right? So, do you understand? There's so many ways of defining India, none of which are wrong. But then some definitions of India will hurt you as the proposition speaker, just like some definitions of India will hurt the other person as the opposition speaker. You have to. Ma'am, you 
voices cracking a lot. You have to definitely do it positively, right? Um, Is there I'm some disturbance? A lot, yeah. in the internet? Not audible. Ah, we are not. Okay. No voice is not coming in. Probably. Okay. Um, I think someone is unmute. Give me a second. Um, voice is not coming. Ma'am, can you hear us? I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so my internet is really not good today for some reasons. I'm not going to be on camera for a while. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't be on camera either. Come back on camera, guys. I have internet issues. You guys don't. Okay. So now, um, talking about... What were we talking about? Yes, India. So India has a lot of ways in which it can get defined. So as a debater, it's your responsibility to define any word in the motion according to how it will suit your case. Okay. So if you have to say fast fashion is bad, then you have to define fast fashion negatively, which means if everything has an upside and a downside to it, you will focus on the downside of fast fashion because you don't have to defend it. You have to offend it. Basically, you have to offend this trend of fast fashion. Do you understand? So according to your burden, according to what you have to prove, you will focus on either defending or not defending a particular idea of a word in the motion. Does that make sense? Are there any doubts about this thing, about what I just explained? Because it's very important. No, ma'am. So in your first speech, try to define the words in the motion. For example, if I am given a motion on fast fashion, this house believes that fast fashion is a bad trend. Then I, as a proposition speaker, I'm going to say a greetings panel. At the very outset, I would like to clarify what we understand as proposition side by the word fast fashion. Fast fashion, according to us, refers to this trend wherein people purchase clothes in very short intervals of time without paying enough attention to utility and just taken, getting take, like being taken in by the aesthetics. Do you understand? That's my idea of fast fashion. It doesn't necessarily have to be your idea of fast fashion as well. But then that's what the debate is about, right? If you think Nitiksha is not defining fast fashion in the right way, you as the opposition speaker have the, have the right to go ahead and say that, look, Nitiksha is wrong in her interpretation. I am going to give you the right one. Do you understand? Okay, guys. So this is called characterization. What we just, un like, what we just learned about words and how to use them and how to put them in the speech is called characterization of the motion characterization do you, any does anyone need me like wants me to give you the spelling as well of characterization i'll just put in the chat ma'am i wanted to ask something yes shoot ma'am so characterization is basically like um you know we give the pros and the cons according to the according to our stance you know whether we are in the proposition side or the opposition side right ma'am so I'm going to tell you something very important just because this question got asked. Please guys pay attention to this, okay? As the proposition side or as the government side, you have the privilege of defining the terms in the motion more than the opposition side. What does that mean? If you are the proposition speaker and you have gone ahead and defined fast fashion, then opposition cannot say that we do not agree with the proposition's definition of fast fashion until and unless it's absolutely bizarre or it's absolutely meaningless. Which means if I as the government side go ahead and say that fast fashion refers to a trend where aesthetics are cared about more than utility of clothes and if it is reasonable, then it has to be accepted by opposition as well because government gets the chance to define the motion. That's just a privilege that government has and opposition does not. But Opposition can definitely go ahead and correct the government if the government is going wrong in their characterization. So it's very important for you as proposition to go to be right about your characterization. Because if government goes ahead and says that, look, fast fashion is just people walking, wearing clothes and walking fast. It's just absolutely bizarre, right? 
it's something that you made out of your head on the spot which has no meaning at all so don't think that oh just because i have the privilege of defining the motion i will get away with the stupidest of characterizations that doesn't happen opposition will call you out adjudicators will understand why you are wrong and you will not be given the marks you, you like which are which would have been due to you had your characterization been right does that make sense i hope it does all right that is about characterization now another very important thing when you're going ahead and researching on your motion is to find out about status quo which might be a tricky word so i'll write it down in the chat now does anybody know the meaning of status quo just raise your hand don't just suddenly unmute yourself and boom does anybody know again somebody spoke without raising their hands not appreciated raise your hands first speak second second does anyone know what status quo is it's absolutely fine if you guys don't but then nobody does i think okay all right i'll uh, take the answer from you vanna i'm sorry if i'm misspelling status quo yes it's in the chat as well yeah when i i think you can go ahead it's when they are possible and the status quo means the existing state of affairs we are talking about cool fair enough yes uh, bhavya what's your answer is it any different vanyas the existing state of affairs especially your voice is cracking ma'am okay all right fair enough uh rhythma rhythma are you on mute because it shows on my screen that you're on mute and i can't hear you yeah ma'am now can you hear me yeah 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 perfectly yes yeah okay, ma'am ma'am uh, the existing state of uh, affairs uh, particularly uh, military affairs or maybe uh, with regard to social affairs state uh, uh, existing state affairs or military affairs something like that okay if anybody has a different qu- answer to this particular question only then raise your hands now I'll take Adam followed by Pratik followed by Navya followed by Bhavya. If I have mispronounced your name, sorry, correct me. Yes, please go ahead in that order. Especially regarding. Especially regarding social. Social issues. Okay. Issues. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Adam, do you have anything to say? I see your hands raised. Has been raised for quite a while now. uh excuse me yes rudima mam uh, can it be the current state of social structure or values it can be a lot of things yes of a part of which is social st- like yeah social configuration um whoever's hand is raised and mute yourself and speak now one by one pratik followed by navya followed by adam um uh, mam it means current situation yeah current situation yes navya um it's regarding st- a state of affairs and especially about um uh politics and social media all right so politics social media social configuration in general ananya mom i wanted to ask a question you know this is not related to the term status quo so mom uh, what is a model and why do we need it for in the- um that will come later that will come later right now stick to status quo okay don't break that yes. line of thought yes, um yes. adam please speak up if you have like anything to say navya All right, guys. I think I've taken enough responses. Those who are not responding, to be ple- to please be careful from next time onwards uh, with raising your hands. So, status quo is everything that you guys said and more, right? So, status quo is definitely talking about the existing situation as it is in different walks of life, which could be political, social, cultural, economic, technolo- technology, or re- related. Um, what else? Anything, right? It can be as specific as 
education sector of a particular country it can be as broad as global perspective on technology and where it is taking us as humanity do you understand it's just discussing what is the status of this thing that i am debating on in the world in my country in my local region or wherever the debate is taking place do you understand this house believes that fast fashion should not be introduced in india this means that for you to be able to do anything with this motion you need to know where india is in terms of fast fashion right now in status quo because what if fast fashion is already there in india what if it's already been introduced because it has been right all of us wear clothes from h&m all of us wear clothes from zara both of which are fast fashion brands which means that we already have a surge of fast fashion in our country that's only growing so to say that this house believes that india should not be introduced to fast fashion is a false statement it's a wrong motion because india is already introduced to fast fashion do you understand how do you investigate the motion you investigate the motion by finding out how is this particular word that i am using in the debate related to the context that i have been given context here is india and how does it relate to india is it yet to be introduced to india is it already introduced to india is its influence growing or decimating what exactly is happening how do i go about creating my own speech based on what is already happening for example i can't say this house regrets the rise of gandhianism in india because the rise of gandhian ideologies i mean i can say i regret the rise of gandhi gandhian ideology why because there has already been a rise of gandhian ideology in india right everybody does practice follow the gandhian ideology of non violence or whatever of satyagraha and whatever but then if i talk about something if i talk about regretting something that doesn't even happen in the first place then it doesn't make any sense right for example this house regrets the practice of patricide in india all of you understand what patricide is right so um or just let me take a better example this no, house I regrets the absence this house regrets the absence of religion in india can i debate on that motion is that motion even relevant no right how is that relevant now i saw you nodding your head can you tell me why you think it's relevant the absence of religion in india can you regret it come on uh, anybody can you guys answer this house regrets the absence of religion in india do you think this is a debatable motion no yes, ma'am ma'am no ma'am because okay. yeah already yeah. exists in india and why uh, if it already exists why would you regret, regret it that it's not there so all the topics should be according to the status quo fair enough yes very uh, accurate an answer uh, who was saying yes though what was it you okay everybody is uh, lower their hands right so what rhythm i saying is right right you can't just go ahead and say that we regret something that doesn't even happen in the first place for you to regret something it has to have happened right like if something hasn't happened i can't say i regret it because it's not happened in the first place i can't say i this i can't say i regret rhythma not having like i reg regret rhythma showing disrespect to me because she hasn't disrespected me so far what am i talking about right so for you to regret something it has to happen in the first place which is why you need to know what status quo is because how do you get to know if something has happened or not if something is all has already happened or is yet to happen yes, only sure. when you know what the status quo looks like so that is why in a debate it's very very important for your research to be uh, to be inclusive of the idea of status quo so when you uh, research i have asked this question yesterday also can we use poi um in one on one format no i don't think pois is a suitable option because even if you are given the option of pois within 3 minutes do you think you will be able to deliver a speech and also ask pois in between no i think you need longer speeches to accommodate pois right because the person takes some time to ask the questions at least 15 seconds if they are fast speakers more if they are not and then in answering those pois there's another a uh, good 30 40 seconds wasted so i don't think it's feasible for this format because the speaking time is very less for the speaker so replacement of poi in this particular case is your reply speech as simple as that if you had a poi you try and and this means that you have a grievance with the other person's case this means that you have a complaint with the other person's case right 
so raise that complaint in your reply speech right just go ahead and talk about it that look this this is what the other side said and i think it makes it makes no sense at all because this is what my reasoning is like against that so uh think of the reply speeches as a replacement for your pois pois always happen when there are longer speeches not speeches which are as short as 3 minutes long excuse okay. me ma'am um yeah ma'am so in order uh, to make ma'am can we leave not really let it be uh 30 7 for you to leave the session isn't concluded yet so let me take the questions afterwards okay so that the people who want to leave after the session can leave okay so don't ask me questions right now ask me questions after 7:30 after i have completed one last bit that i have to talk to you guys about so another yeah. and the last component which is related to your research is apart from characterization status quo is stakeholders so whenever you're debating on a motion how do you decide who i have to debate about for example this house believes that fast fashion is a bad trend back to the same motion bad trend but for whom right who am i talking about who is it bad for maybe it could be bad for the environment or it could be bad for the consumers of fast fashion us people who buy those clothes or it could be bad for the people who are selling those for the, for the, those kinds of trends right who are making and the workers of the factory the workers of the factory fair enough i think all kinds of stakeholders can be brought in the debate right so whoever all the people who you can consider as actors or participants in the debate are called stakeholders okay i'll just give you guys the spelling as well for those of you who are not acquainted with the word stakeholders so now in if you regret fast fashion the first stakeholder is definitely environment because it takes a huge toll on the environment right so that's your primary stakeholder you have to defend your stakeholders and if the stakeholders are bad then you have to tell us why the how why these stakeholders are bad how they can mend their ways through the process that you are proposing for example i say that fast fashion is a bad trend because the factories the industrialists make benefit like yield profit out of fast fashion like make a lot of money but they don't care about the environment they will start caring about the environment if we ban the practice of fast fashion and bring back the legacy brands what are legacy brands just brands like levi's brands that were supposed to give you clothes that would last for 10 years and 15 years because they were strong and so on and so forth sustainable fashion sustainable ethical fashion whatever so legacy brands did used to do that but now even legacy brands want to switch to becoming fast fashion brands why because um it has a lot of money this market of fast fashion everybody likes fast fashion everybody likes switching clothes every week everybody likes buying cheap uh replicas of very fancy clothes so like if kim kardashian wears something and you want a replica of it at like lower prices nobody is going to say no to that that's why the sales are very high within this fast fashion realm and people want to switch to fast fashion in order to make more money but then what is more important money or environment right that's how you choose your stakeholders you can't say that oh industrialists should be allowed to make money at the cost of the environment right but then how do you come to that conclusion you only come to that conclusion once you start thinking about the stakeholders who are my stakeholders who are the people involved in this debate who are the people who i need to think about who are the people that i think are right and are being wronged by this practice and who are the people that i think are wrong and are unaccountably making a lot of money do you understand so club all of these things together your status quo understanding your stakeholders and your characterization in the first part of your speech take one one and a half minute to define that and then go on to talking about your main arguments like fast fashion should be brand because it uses a lot of water and we are running uh, and the scarcity of water is a major problem right or you could say fast fashion is a bad trend because the developed countries outsource their production to the developing countries which means the production of their clothes also happens in the developing countries and that's why the carbon emissions in developing countries are way more do you understand so those are arguments but what should precede your argument your characterization your stakeholders and your status quo three very important components okay in the reply speeches i told you guys yesterday what you're supposed to be doing that's why i'm not like emphasizing on them today but your reply speeches are also made up of three things one rebuttal to what the other side is saying because it's not enough for you to give your own case 
it's equally important for you to rebut what the other side has said to destroy what the other has, uh, side has said at the same time rebuttals are not enough in a reply speech so give one minute to rebuttals give the second minute in the reply speech perhaps to a comparison how do you compare i say if nabya is proposition and i am opposition i will say as opposition that nabya has said so and so and so things and i have said so and so and so things i think my things are like outdo navya's arguments because of so and so's reasoning that's why panel give the debate to me very very proud to propose proud to take this debate that's how you end it do you understand you have to so show your conviction by giving me a comparative how do i know that you are making sense if you're just dealing with your emotion without thinking about the what the other side has stated don't do that i mean that's the biggest blunder you are capable of you might think oh i'm delivering such a uh, in a very fine way and i am saying just the right things and i have a holistic case but until unless you engage, engage with the other side rest assured your chances of winning are very very less so always compare your uh, case with the other person's case that's the second minute of your reply speech in the third minute of your reply speech you can simply conclude okay conclusion can be in any way possible you can compare so you can uh, extend your comparison to be for not just one minute but two minutes or in the conclusion you can just sum up your points you can sum up their points and say that our three of our points take over three of their points and that's why very proud to win this debate okay so that is it about how you should prepare that is it about what your speeches should entail from my end this is it for today if there are any questions at all which i need to address um i am happy to take them now but not in like uh, a very ruckus manner i'll just have you guys raise your hands and then i'll take you one by one starting with bhavya yeah bhavya go ahead excuse me ma'am can you please explain how sweet things again can i please explain what house three things house of three things house of three things made up of three things house made up of three things yeah, yeah. okay so if you haven't if you haven't understood a part of yeah. this particular session no go yeah. back to watching uh, to watch the recording yeah. does it make okay. sense okay okay, okay so you can watch the recording and it will make sense right because yeah. it was a long session so i can't possibly repeat everything uh misty Yes, ma'am. I just want to ask that: Is it very important to use the house term to introduce our motion? Okay, this is something that I've already clarified, right? You need not use the word "this house." It's your discretion. But what you need to do imperatively is that you need to know what this house is, just so when it comes in a motion, when it features in a motion, you are not taken off guard, right? Right, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Um, Navya. Yes, ma'am. For example, that we have prepared for propositions. So, what if uh, we get up? Uh, we get opposition. So, how will we then deliver the speech? I didn't quite catch that. Can you come again with your question, please? Ma'am, I am saying that for example, uh, we prepare our speech for proposition, and in the debate, we get opposition. So, how we will de de deliver our speech? Okay, so this is not going to happen, right? Because you will be given your stance beforehand with the motion. So you, if you are supposed to go as opposition, you will be told you are supposed to go as opposition. Fair enough. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, you're welcome. Um, uh, Meher. Yeah, this isn't related to the debate part, but just inform you, I wasn't added to the WhatsApp group, and I've checked multiple times. So. Um, Meher, right? Can yeah. you please uh, ping on the ugly number? Do you have it? Um, no. No. Okay, I'll tell the team to add you there. All right, Maher. Noted. Okay. Um, Bhavya, is there another question I need to address? No, ma'am. All right, uh, Maher. The number is in the chat now. You can just text them or call them okay. to let them know, right? um mr is there a question no lower your hands please whoever doesn't have a question just lower yeah okay janvi how will we get to know that where we have to use this house like where it is necessary to use it 
it is not necessary for you to use it in your speeches that's for sure if you are not comfortable using this house because you are new debaters well and good you just need to know what this house is because it will come in your motion so that is not something that you can do away with right because it will be feature in your motion that's why i have helped you understand what this house means so that just so you're not scared of those new terms right because it's not very obvious for you to understand what this house is so that's why i told you about it other than that don't like fixate on that don't obs be obsessed about it it's it's not very relevant when it comes to your speech um ovia followed by rhythma i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing mispronouncing your names um yes ma'am so when we are talking about the topic of mm, mm, how to save our livelihood then how will we know what the other person is competing and saying about it you can never tell what the other person is going to say until unless you've already heard them speak but what you can practice doing to understand how you can prep about this like how you would have prepped it as the other side is that when you given 3 days time no just take some time out to understand okay so don't just assume yourself to be government for example i tell you that you will be proposition and this is your motion okay so you know that your side is going to be the government side in the tournament in the first round at least right so now don't automatically switch to talking about government side because you are government side try to first make this debate from the proposition opposition side try to first make your arguments from the opposition side what would i say if i wasn't proposition but if i was opposition do you understand that way you will be able to understand what i would have said if i was opposition now once you already had some arguments from opposition switch back to your original role of proposition and then try to counter your own points about opposition does that make sense or is it very confusing it's confusing it's confusing okay so if you are government so if i tell you that in the tournament you will be the government side you know you are supposed to speak for the motion right now you want to you can't know beforehand what the other side is going to say right how can you possibly find out just to like get close to those arguments you can assume to be that other side for some time during your prep do you understand so if i am government and if i want to know what the opposition will say what i can do is that i can try to pretend to be the opposition for some time and write down points as if i was opposition does that make sense yes. so if there is a motion this house believes that fast fashion should be banned then you as government have to ban fast fashion right but opposition has to say that fast fashion shouldn't be banned which means that first you try to think about arguments from the opposition if i was my op opponent how would i talk about fast fashion i would say it should not be banned because of what reasons so research yes. according to that and then come back to your original case government because then you will know what the opposition might say right ma'am does that can make I sense can i ask a... hello ma'am um yes please yes ma'am this is obvious mother uh, i have one doubt like uh, the one topic which is already given that is the global community and our planet uh, the sustainability of these things is this the fixed or will these children will be given uh, some other topics to debate on because on this topic i think everybody will agree on one thing so how will the competition so, so far on, the students have only been given the themes right there are six oh. themes pollution mm -hmm. plastic waste fast fashion so on and so forth mm -hmm. the motions will be based on these themes which means okay. these are the broad categories within which these themes are going to be okay. as far as uh, the balancing of the motion is concerned we will ensure that motion, the motion is not very imbalanced in the sense that there uh, there will be a case possible from both the sides it wouldn't be like government heavy or opposition heavy so in order that to prepare will... that particular theme like how many days will we get before that to prepare on 3 days so you will get the motion 3 days before but okay. since you already have the theme with you i think you can educate your ward about those themes at least already okay. beforehand right like she can read up on since past questions since we know the can... broad topic oh, okay so we yes. can uh, educate them on that okay yeah yeah yes for okay. now yeah. thank you you welcome um but yes ma'am uh, 
Ma'am, uh, if I am uh, from opposition side and an another one is from the positive side, you said that fast fashion is. Ma'am, uh, can we leave if we don't have any questions? Yes, please. Whoever doesn't have a question can are, are like good to leave. Thank you for joining. Good day. See you around tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, if we said that fast. Fashion is not good for us, and it should be have to ban. So, ma'am, I also agree that. So, what kind of uh, kind of I can do for this? Part your voice is very feeble for me. I can't quite comprehend. Can you put in the chat? Okay, ma'am. Ma Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, can you please send the uh, recording of this meeting? That will be up on the YouTube channel by tomorrow morning. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Mom, now can I ask? Yes, Rudima, go ahead. Followed by Avni. Followed by Parth. Mom, tomorrow will we have a class for the seventh uh, to ninth batch? Yes, tomorrow it's a it's it's a session for everybody. Tomorrow we'll case prep. Okay, ma'am. And ma'am, the, the second thing I wanted to ask that uh, will we be trained on our prior experience, or everybody will be trained on the same level? Everybody is being trained on the same level. Whatever prior experience the other people had, you have been given those technical terms, etc. Today, so you are on a level playing field. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Right. You're Hi, welcome. Abhi, bye. Ma'am, you said that the uh, that both the sides, proposition and opposition sides, uh, get three minutes for their initial speech and three minutes for their reply speech. So, uh, can they interfere in between? Mean uh, of their opposite points. No, not really. Um, because you have been given six minutes divided into three minutes for each speech, you don't get to interject in between because then it becomes very anarchic. How do we control that situation, right? Wherein people only get three minutes to speak, even within that you are trying to just like uh, render them perturbed because you're constantly asking them questions, right? So I don't think that's advisable. Stick to your time limit. Whatever you have to say, say it in your constructive speech. Say it in your reply speech. Get done with it. And ma'am, one more thing that uh, will we get uh, to means will we get a choice that we can go to the opposition side or proposition side or they have. A I don't think so. You will be given a stance and a motion. So motion accompanied by the stance. So no choice as such. Oh. All right. Um. Any other question, guys? Okay, Parth's question is in the chat. Ma'am, if I am from opposition side and positive side said fast fashion is bad and has to be banned, and I also agree. Oh, all right. So if you are opposition, you can't possibly agree with the other side, even if in real life you do think that fast fashion should be banned. Okay. So that like, that's the trick of the motion. Even if you think you don't think that you should be. I mean, even if your original viewpoint is the same as your opposition side's viewpoint. You can't let that show. You still have to develop a case that's uh, that is against your original way of thinking. Does that answer part? I mean, that's the way. That's why you debate, right? For you to under appreciate other viewpoints as well. For you to go against your own viewpoint sometime. Okay, ma'am. All right. Any other question that I need to address, guys, before we leave? And call it a day. Okay, Arush. Yes, Arush, shoot. If you can't find like any argument for your own perspective, hey, I can't hear you. Can you come like closer to the mic? I was saying, what if you can't find the like any argument for your own perspective? No, I couldn't quite catch that. Can you put it in the chat? Um, Avni, is there another question? No, that's okay. All right, Arush, we're waiting for your question and then we'll call it a day. What if you can't find any suitable argument for your own perspective? That's very unlikely. Like I told uh, the other student as well, the motion, once they, when they're being set by whoever is setting them, they're always set from a perspective that they are debatable. When does a motion become debatable? Only when both sides can say something about it, right? So at no point in time will there be a situation where you are not able to find arguments from one side. You might have to research a bit like more diligently because it's a very specific thing.
thing you're debating about but then seldom does it happen that you don't have anything to say at all okay if you think that's the case you can come back to us that look i think this motion is problematic and we'll rectify it for you we'll tell you where you're going wrong or whatever once the motions are out does that answer arush all right you're welcome um okay guys then have a good day good evening and uh, we'll meet tomorrow for a case prep session right all right bye thank you